My best friend and little Asian girl, she was blind. But every day we would have lunch together. She had these great barbecue beef sandwiches. And I'd have these boring peanut butter and jelly. So every day we would exchange lunch. Now what I didn't realize until I got older, she never saw me exchange those lunches. <laughs> But then again, I never heard her complain about it either. <laughs> One of the first times that I did learn as a child was good morning. And I got to tell you, as a kid, I was so excited that I could communicate that the very next family reunion, I went up to everybody and I signed, good morning. <laughs> I guess you can say they're not morning people. Then they found out the day that I had started giving me hearing aids and I started learning how to talk. So as far as they were concerned, I was sick. They sent me back to public school. I was in public school in fourth, fifth grade. I stole money. I stole candy. I stole things from my house to take to school, to give to the other kids because I wanted them to like me. So I'm in school and I'm saying, hi, you like me to be my friend? I just want to be accepted. I wanted to be a part of something. Everybody wants to be accepted, a part of something. So I stole, and I would give stuff away. I couldn't understand anything in the classroom. Teachers would have their back up against the blackboard. I couldn't hear what they were saying. By the time one kid would say something, I'd go to look for their lips, another kid's lips were moving. I was totally lost. I graduated from high school with a one-point average. I didn't know what to do with my life. I was so lost and so confused for so long. So by the time I was 20 years old, I tried committing suicide five different times. Now there are going to be some things I'm not going to be successful at. <laughs> and there's not a day that goes by where I don't thank God for letting me fail at least five different times. <laughs> when I was 20 years old, I was laying on a beach sunbathing. Lifeguard Jeep ran me over. Talk about not knowing what your job description is. <laughs> The jeep ran over my face, stomach, chest, died and back. I was laid up for five years. I died at the scene of the accident. I saw a life after death. At least I believe I did. When it happened to me, when the jeep ran over my face, I opened my eyes and I saw the bottom of the jeep. And I could see the two rear wheels coming at me. And all I could think about is I need to protect my head. So I went to put my hand up above my head, and unfortunately when I did that, the rear wheels took my elbows and took me and turned me. The next thing I remembered, everything turned the most beautiful blue, a blue I yet to see on this earth. I was totally surrounded by it. And then the brightest, whitest cloud came toward me. And all I could remember was, no, I'm not ready yet. And I just got like, I'm not ready yet. And when I said that, everything faded away. And I saw the paramedics started working on me. Laid up for five years. In and out of a wheelchair for two and a half years. They said I'd never walk again. I figured I didn't hear him. I got up and I left. <laughs> I'll never forget the day I got up out of intensive care and they had me in a wheelchair by the window and I yelled at God, you can't do this to me, I can't be in a wheelchair, I can't have a hearing loss to be in a wheelchair for the rest of my life, Lord please, let's not do this. And I said, you know when I thought about coming back, you didn't tell me about this. I worked really hard to walk. I used to join the YMCA and I'd swim, something told me that if I kept swimming eventually my legs would follow with me. Either that or drag behind, I don't know, one or the other. <laughs> when I started walking, one day I just packed my car up. I was living in Cleveland, Ohio, and I started driving. I ended up at the Pacific Ocean. I looked at the ocean, I looked at the car, and I said, Don, I ain't going any further, am I? <laughs> I ended up in California. When I was 27 years old, I got diagnosed with cervical cancer. Now, after a while, you get a little upset. <laughs> 
So I sit there, the doctor said, we'll have the surgery. I went in, I had the surgery. Six months later, I get a phone call, Kathy, we didn't get it all. I didn't know what to do. I was in my apartment, pacing the floor. Do I have the surgery, do I not? I mean, I spent the first 20 years of my life trying to commit suicide. I finally died, and then I decided to stay. <laughs> and now you're telling me if I don't have the surgery, I have six months to a year to live. I have no family support. What do I do? I, a perfect child of God, and society took me by the back of the neck and said, here, you're going to be retired. Whoa, this is okay. I like this. I like this school. These people are really great. No, 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 no. Now you have your hearing aid. You're fixed. You're going back to public school. I don't understand the teacher. The teacher has her back turned to me. The kids are making fun of me. No, 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 no. Now you're going to be in a wheelchair for the rest of your life because you got run over by a Jeep. God, please don't forsake me like this. I can't live like this. No, 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 no. Now I'm going to give you cancer. I'm going to give you six months so you to live. This is where I learned how to say, no, 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 no. Hear this. How dare you say I cannot talk? How dare you say I cannot walk? How dare you say I cannot have a life? How dare me for listening to you? I decided to take control of my life, take charge of it. I changed my diet, I changed my attitude. And I've been clean of cancer for over 15 years. Yeah. The gift of choice, it's a gift that's given to you that nobody can take away from you. You have unlimited choices. If you make the wrong choice, you can try to correct it with another choice to make it right. Your life is the most precious gift you'll ever have. And it's the only one you have. You'll come into this world alone, you will leave alone. Who you meet in between is the challenge of how you deal with your life. Remember, no matter how bad something is in your life, it has a time limit. And women, we know we can drag something bad on forever. <laughs> but also remember, no matter how good something's going on in your life, that too has a time limit.